guess what we just saw that you won't see in America for like, I don't know, some days. Probably a couple of days. I think it opens on the 17th. Okay. America. We saw The Hobbit, The Battle of the... Well, it's they say right. the five armies, it's but like it's 7. actually... It's It's four armies, armies yeah. versus one, really. Well, I mean, yes, no, in the book it was four armies versus one. Yes, yeah, so it's not really a battle of five armies. It's... Well, no, it's because five armies were involved. It's because Bilbo remarks, oh my gosh, a battle of three armies, because all the men and elves and dwarves are there. Has there ever been such a thing? And then the when they're like, holy fuck, the orcs are coming on wargs. They're like four armies. Weren't they supposed oh, to be the goblins change. from Goblin Town in the book? Yeah. In this one, it's just like, they're like it's like Peter Jackson orcs. was embarrassed by the Goblin Town and so he said, no, it's just orcs. We're just going to well, pretend Goblin Town didn't happen. Goblins were huge, in, in, like, like size-wise, were like the size of, if not bigger than orcs. Well, actually, no, I think orcs are a bit bigger. And I think in the books, goblins and orcs are the same thing, but in the film, they're different. Not, no. They're, they're, they're different. Okay, in the Bass Rankin films, they looked the same. Mm -hmm. But they are different. They have a common ancestor. They're, they're dark races, but they have a common ancestor. And if you know more than me, if you've read the Summerlin and all the appendices, and I'm going to write the show. But as far as I know, they're related, but they're different thingies. Goblins are different than orcs. Okay, because I, I thought Tolkien, uh, after the, the, the Hobbit was written for children, so they were mm -hmm. goblins. And then when they do Lord of the Rings, he sort of retconned them into being orcs because he felt that goblins were too silly for Lord of the Rings. No, because even in the retcon, they're, they're, they're called goblins. Goblins ain't, ain't, no, ain't no slack, yo. I mean, Glamouring Fohammer and the other one were forged during the Goblin Wars. Like, the elves didn't just sweep in there and be like, NPC ninja themselves to, to, like them to the death. Films. Right. Goblins were like a serious threat if the elves had to go to war with them. So, just okay. saying. So, actually, here I'm going to break with tradition. And there were some things that didn't happen the, the same way in the book or happened the different way from the book. But they weren't as affecting as in the first two movies. Oh my god, I'm being a leg something in the Hobbit no, film. No, 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 I'm just saying that... What's like, gone wrong? The, 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 I can understand, <coughs> excuse me, given what they did with the extra bits that they added, that they had to do it this way, and some things would niggle a little teeny bit, and I was like, that didn't happen in the book. There's one big difference between this one and the other two. What's it now? We didn't see it in America no, on an IMAX. It. We saw it, actually, we saw it at the, um, the, the Omniplex? Yeah, the Omniplex on Strand Road. Which is really great because it's it's a classist theater. Like you can just buy the regular seats, you know, just see like the regular yeah, like you do. Or for one pound more, you get the max experience with these like cushy, comfy, leathery chairs that go back and forth. Even in the more, basic cinema, it's a classist room, thing because it costs more to buy a ticket in the main part than it does in the crappy seats at the front. Mm -hmm. It's so, really annoying to me. It's like cinemas. Okay, this is how it used to be done in the back in the day with theaters and all, like 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 in theaters. <laughs> but. No, cinemas should be uh, all, you just get whatever chair well, you can, it's all is, the same. I'd rather pay an extra pound than pay an extra three pounds for a taxi to the Brunswick, so there you go. Well, that's true, yes. The, although Brunswick is a better cinema. It is. They give you Ben and Jerry's. They do, but it was easier to do this because it wasn't time. But anyway, so that's the thing. So, <laughs> so there you go. So it was very good, um, it was very good. Some, I will, I, okay, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. need Aaron over, you know, Aaron? Car, go to the bowling alley. Better. Iron, come back. We need your car. Come back. It's so mean. We we <laughs> value you as a person, but also we like your. No, that's terrible. Yeah. But so um, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. But the best thing that happened during the movie is, everyone. Okay, if you if most of the people who are watching the movie have read the book, Bilbo gets knocked out during the course of the battle. It happens differently in this one than it does in the book. We'll get to that. But when it happens, someone in the back of the he goes, "Oh Jesus, not Bilbo." Yeah, the. <laughs> it's so great because you. Can, Oh, and, he, and, then, and then his silence goes, ah, oh, Jesus! Even the film was out, no music, nothing. It's just all oh, that, that <laughs> corner behind us. And then you could tell that either the same person or someone sitting near them didn't read the book, because when Feely and Keeley died, they were like, no! They were like, <laughs> we knew that was coming. <laughs> Even I knew it was coming, and I, don't, I never read it. But, but yeah, so, again, spoilers, 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 the dragon dies, the good guys win, but you knew that. I mean, come on, really. So Yeah, they killed Benedict Cumberbatch. So happy. He was like, I was only in the movie for five minutes. He's taking hard-working dragon actors, you know, roles <laughs> and giving it to a white English guy just like they did in Star Trek. It's like, it's unfair. I still want to see a shot of, no. um, him, like, you know, what's his face as Bilbo Baggins, like in like a publicity shot standing in front of like, you know, CGI'd smog and that they fight crime. 
Because it's because it's Sherlock and Watson. I know. I know. I'm thinking stuff. And he They're probably he's... like, "Hello, friend. So I'll see you like in a month when we film for Sherlock." All right. We'll see. He's in Doctor. He's in Doctor Strange as well. He's taking the work from hardworking uh, white American sorcerer surgeons and giving it to an English guy. Better to Cumberbatch taking jobs from everyone else. All right. So let's start with the things that weren't good. They had, I'm sure, to Peter Jackson. I mean, obviously, if you you create things that are really awesome all the time. Maybe you can't tell when things are less awesome, and I, I accept that, you know, I respect that. Because there were some parts in this where we, like, there was, there was one part where, okay, Thorin is is possessed by the, the dragon madness. He wants to hoard gold, he's obsessed with finding the Arkenstone, and this happens in the book, okay, I'm good with it. But the way his madness is portrayed, like, he gets paranoid, and that, that's fine. But he has this scene where he's standing, and again, CGI was great, in the middle of this solid gold hall. Yeah, that's where the, the, the liquid gold that they tried yeah. to kill Smug with, is obviously a set because it looks really awesome. And then he has this man, he's hearing sin, things are in slow motion, and he's snapping in and out of it, hallucinating, and it looks kind of silly. See, I like that. That was one of my favorite sections of the film, so it reminded me of the Mirkwood section. But I, I don't think... It's just one where like, shit's weird I didn't, and like the well. I didn't like the slow motion. If it had happened at the regular frame rate, I would have been fine with it. It'd be interesting to watch that in 48 frames. Yeah, that's true. And then there's the part where... Okay, so elves are the basic, like, NPC ninjas of Middle-earth. We know this. Where Legolas is battling. He does this, this parkour thing where... You've done this in every video game, I'm yes. sure. Yes! This a is bridge, a quick time event! A bridge is falling, and it starts to go in slow motion, and it press X to jump to this one, press, you know, basically like that. Falling bricks! It's like he's Marioing it! But I, I could see! I could see enough doing it! But I don't understand why they had to slow it down to bullet time for that to happen. <laughs> Maybe it was because the frame rate was shrugging when they were trying to render it. I don't know. Maybe no, slow space. motion for some reason automatically looks cool. It does. It looked silly is what it, it looked did. like. It looked like... And because... Sounds like going to dub on Mario. Sounds warning, warning, warning. Okay, okay. Oh, hold on. I want to say one more thing, though. The other thing was, and this is probably an experience unique to the two of us, is I've just spent like 60... Okay, but 55 hours now. In the past week, playing Dragon Age Inquisition... So it was so hard when people were having dialogue. Not I kept looking up for the subtitle because I put subtitles on because sometimes my my brother in law is in the bedroom next to me, so sometimes I have to have the volume down. So if he's sleeping, looking up for the subtitles or automatically looking down for the dialogue wheel to pop up so I can be like a song. It doesn't help that like Dwalin was Arl Eamon in, in Dragon Age Origins, and there's a scene where he it's like he's yelling at Loghain at it the is. lands meet. It's so great and. <laughs> The thing is that he's, yell he's yelling at, at uh, Th uh, Thorin. I can really see. And I leant over and I was I compared that to and you you laughed because the scenes were similar. Then I you didn't because realize it was Arl Lehman. I didn't I didn't realize that. But the <sighs> thing is that I mean I was like the first ten minutes I was like I want to go home by Dragon Age, and that leads me on to, to fantasy. Which you haven't killed any dragons yet in or in Inquisition, have no, you? No, I haven't. But. Um, yeah, so you can see like a lot of the, the like Old Kingdom's architecture is very Tevinter in nature, and a lot of the Dwarven stuff, it looks very like the, the Dwarven stuff in Dragon Age, so you can really see how much Peter Jackson has influenced the visual style of fantasy. Actually, a lot of the Dwarven stuff has been directly taken up from uh, Warhammer. Oh, really? Well, then you can clearly see especially, um, how Peter Jackson popularized especially, Warhammer. Especially Dane. Dane is a troll slayer. The dwarves in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in Warhammer, they have a particular class of because warriors this is really what you who, are, the who are basically like the Legion of the Dead. They have done something and they are going to atone for it through glorious death in battle against a giant monster. But they don't wear armor, they dye their hair and beard bright orange, they cover themselves in, in tattoos, and they kill the shit out of stuff. Dane, and then you saw in flashbacks, Dwalin had mm -hmm. the same thing, big orange mohawk. That's a troll slayer, uh, but they all they are different classic giant slayer, troll slayer. You got demon slayer, that's the dragon slayer. They're they are the one that they name themselves after what they intend to die killing. Okay, so there was that. Um, so yes. Although although Warhammer dwarves do not fucking use our bows and arrows, they use crossbows, and they do not use spears. Spears are fucking elvish weapon. They barely use shields. Anyway. Two-handed weapons. Okay, so your overall thoughts. Because I'm going to go wax philosophical and that might take a while, so you go first. That's the cat, by the way. with the Like the all of the... <laughs> she loved it. Be an RV luck. Yeah. Not so much? Okay. Like all of the Peter Jackson's Hobbit films, um, it's good with reservations. And there were definitely chunks in it where you can tell that Peter Jackson didn't want to direct it. Really? 
Yeah, he was not supposed to direct the Hobbit films. Guillermo del Toro was supposed to. You know, I heard that back in the day. So, like, what? Because that's the first time you said this out of the. It's uh, it's basically it's uh, his directorial laziness. By everything CGI, it's just basically the same sort of thing that George Lucas did oh. in 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 the in the, pre, in the prequel things. Just film it in a room and then add stuff later on. In the yeah, but there's only so much you can do practically. Oh no, no, there's a lot you can do practically. Everything in this they could have done practically in the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yeah, well, they, Lake Town was a set. You no, know, there's lots of sets built and everything, yeah. but and they do they use much less of it. Like um, although I will say, don't see this in a cold theater because it's butt cold in Ireland right now, and it was cold in the theater. I'm wearing like my big omega hoodie and a t-shirt. I was freezing in Lake Town. The freezing, they're in like fr it's so cold, <laughs> and I think I felt the, the atmosphere cold of this movie more than I mean, you know, if you see well he did theater because I was like, oh my gosh, I hope I hope they don't fall under the ice because that would suck because I'm cold. But, uh, for instance, uh, the the orcs are all CGI faced. There's no reason for that. It's just so they can change. It. There's a couple. I didn't of... know. That. I thought they were practical with CGI effects. No. Okay. The um, I mean, they use a lot of green screen studios and stuff like that. It's there were just some stuff in here where it's just like he did it as uh, quickly as po as quickly and as simply as possible. Maybe he was running over budget. Although they had to have known this would the make as the, much the money. The budget of one Hobbit film was more than the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy. Jeez. And that is not entirely because of uh, uh, that they would do a CGI, but it's going to be at least part of it. I guess. Um, the, I can't off the top of my head. I can't remember this big moment that sort of leapt out at me as as a sign that Peter Jackson did not want was not really enthused about doing it. I mean, he was going through the motions. Mm -hmm. I can't remember it, but there's definitely one or two. Okay. Uh, yeah. um, although it was nice to see the League of NPC Super Friends kicking some Nazgul ass, even though it didn't happen in the book. But well, it happened, happened in the appendices. Yes, but it didn't happen. It, if it doesn't happen on screen, it doesn't happen with an accent. It doesn't you would, exist. Whatever. But yeah. We also, I, there was a part where they're in the ruins of Dale and they see like this old, this little like carousel. And I leaned over, it's all like ruined and broken. And I was like, it's, it's going to be Chekhov's car carousel, but we'll see it fixed at the end. And we didn't. And I felt sad. But, yeah. Um, and the, the lame PC super friends. Basically, Galadriel, um, Elrond. Elrond and Saruman come in and dress I don't know why the orcs didn't have any watch, you know, people looking out or anything. I was case, because their and, forces are and they, they're like all bright and everything. It's like, holy shit, what's that night light coming towards us that's shaped like Galadriel? I don't know, it's probably nothing. Oh, well, look upon me and, just, and, they, and they didn't bring any fucking army or anything, it's just them individually. It's like Elrond's just a guy with a sword because basically they knew that they're NPCs. It was ridiculous. That's, they're the they're the level forty plus but party. Christopher Lee. Okay, my original my theory in Hobbit because Christopher Lee was so aged and so clearly like you know frail was that uh, he ba uh, Saruman ages backward. He gets younger and more virile because, possibly because of exposure to Saruman, Sauron or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and in this one, Christopher Lee was markedly looked five years younger, unless they filmed this before they filmed The that Unexpected Journey, Rebecca. which is possible. Although, because, I don't, I don't think so, because really all, of his, like, all, all of his, like, major fighting and stuff like that, most of it was done with his back to the camera. Oh, no, the only that second part, the, the start, you could see, but there was... was, there there, was I thought it was, I thought it was a body double. No, no, there, there, it was definitely a body double, given his age. Okay, However, yeah. um, it was far better disguised than it was in, say, Attack of the Clones or Revenge of the Sith. Poor guy's old. Yeah, he's like 93. You what? know, he released recently what? his third annual Christmas single of heavy metal covers of Jesus. Christmas songs. This one, um, last year he did like Jingle Hell. It's a really good thing that he doesn't use his powers for evil because he could be ruling the world right now, that's all we're saying. He's like, he's like 90. What am I going to do now? If you're Christopher Lee, write the show. It's like, but I've already been a Nazi hunter. I have been one of the inspirations for James Bond. Been cousin of the James Bond creator. I have been a trained opera singer, descendant of Charlemagne, speak five languages, like, met J.R.R. Tolkien, appeared in more films than any other series, you know, feature film actor in history. I have also, like, the world record leading man height in the world. What am I going to do now? At Disney World. I'm going to become a heavy metal star. Like, age literally, 90. he needs to be in an epic rap battle of history. Not any of the characters he's played, him personally. Yeah. Do it, he, guys. He, right to epic Anyone battle else just it. like, no, I'm not going to fuck But him anyway, the home. Against you. <laughs> but, um, so. He I, deserves to be the meme over Chuck Norris. Yeah. I kind of, this is so mean of me, because. Okay. And this might be a bit controversial, and everyone was like, why do they add a woman character to this? There weren't any women in The Hobbit, which is true, that there weren't. And and then I was like, yeah, uh, okay, I, I, I get that, you know, that 
there were women in Middle Earth doing things and stuff in Ari. You know, okay, so things and stuff. But I was kind of pleased that none of the romances actually worked out against spoilers, because I don't feel that. I always feel that if there's going to be a romance or something, I want it to be a subplot to what's going on. You know, I really that really yanks me out of a fantasy novel where, like, you have, especially if you have a strong female character, it's like, things and stuff, and then, you know, oh, but now I found a man, so everything's great, and, and oh, but I'm almost dying, except the cure for that's getting pregnant, and I'm like, really, babe? Really? And so that's led to, and I freely admit this is a bias, and I'm not saying that there's, that there's, I'm not saying the fantasy that has romantic subplots is not good, because I know that it is, as a lesbian, you know, it kind of bugs me when, oh, the, 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 we could have solved the problems of all of our land and all the supernatural things and killed Satan if only I'd boned and gotten pregnant before, before now. But, like, so, that's a bias on my part, so I was like, ha, ha, oh. ha, your romance didn't work, oh, like, let's go cry about it, she doesn't love you. I Okay, I didn't. I did not like the inclusion of Toriel. She grew on me a little bit in this because she got hurt a lot. Like, but I didn't like it. But to bitch about it, the third movie doesn't make sense. I, I, I maintain. I thought this since the first one. What they should have done was use the fact that dwarf dwarves tr women traditionally look like men and have several of the dwarf company being women and just not really talking about it. Just they refer to each other as she and stuff, and it's not a big deal. Bilbo could be all like, oh, look, culture shock, this is weird, and Gandalf's like, well, don't judge a book by its culture co cover. Not all species are, are the ha have same sexual dimorphism. You should know better, Mr. Baggins. Something like that. Very Check simple. your hobbit privilege. I want a t-shirt that says that. No, I want a t-shirt that says, check your elf privilege. Oh, please, somebody. You, know, you can, you can you have, copyright the idea and make you know, it. I, mean, I want we'll need a t-shirt that says, check your elf privilege. I maintain that the, that the dwarf... Um, who 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 offered Gandalf tea in Bag End, and I can't remember his name. The the camp one. I maintain that one's the the the, the dwarf chick. It very much. I maintain might be that possible. because yes, we saw some dwarf women in Erebor, and they didn't have beards. And fuck you, Peter Jackson, for that. And they had, yeah, they had they like can, sideburns. They can decide, but I no, because I think it should be like Cheery Little Bottom from um from Discworld, where like okay, you have cultures that interact with each other. And what if some dwarf women were like, oh, these are what all the fashionable human women are doing. They're shaving their beards and then makeup. Because that's what, that's her thing. Is like she, a lot of the, a lot of the, the dwarves, you know, really are pissed off at her because she wears a skirt and she tries to be like, like, have the beauty standards of, of humans because she thinks that's really cool and neat. Oh yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm and feeling I, 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 And I think that, I, and I, I don't understand why you're, why you're saying to the dwarven women can't <laughs> shave their beards. And that's, that's very... Something is. We have do. seen. We have seen. Se we have. We saw several dwarf women in Erebor. Alright, there's like forty-five minutes. Or there's like little battery power. So oh, the battery power is going down. Don't worry. That's. Uh, that's. Just cut. She'll cut this part out. Don't worry about it. No, I won't. I scratched my nose. You better. I look like I was picking it. Too. But. I, I'm familiar with the cheery little bottom stuff, and I'm perfectly fine with that. But the, we saw several dwarf women, and they all had no beards. And it's like it's as though Peter Jackson had the idea of d bearded dwarf women as a joke. In, uh, in in the two towers, which is not world building, it's just it's heteronormative oh, beauty standards as, and making other stuff as a joke. And it's, it is not. And you could have created; they could have created a truly alien uh, sort of you know sexual dimorphism in their in their one of their hero races and have it. It's not about sexual dimorphism; it's about Bilbo Baggins. Yes, they could have had it in there as a little tiny bit. Let me quote a venerable DM of mine: "No one gives a shit about the tensile strength of rope." Well, you there are a lot of things that have nothing to do with Bilbo Baggins that were put in there. Yeah, I know. By both Tolkien and by Peter Jackson. I know, and actually... So I'm they not, didn't need to. Yeah. So, literally, we don't actually need to have the film, because the film doesn't need to well, exist. now I'm going to launch into my spiel. Okay. Are you, have you made all your main points? I, I will try to think of that moment where I could tell that Peter Jackson really had enough of this Yeah, shit. think about that and interrupt me if I you get to I'm try and remember it. So, so, here's the thing. One of the things that they changed, and I understand why they had to do it, because we talked about it in Tesco, was that Bard... When he's the uh, dragon's smog is flying overhead, he sees the hole in the armor, and that's when he gets the idea. Oh, I'm gonna. And it was pretty epic how he kind of made well, it like in the a previous film. Dolly like, told, told the story. And no one else believed him, but uh, he was all like, "My great uh, great great grandfather, he fired the arrow and he took the took the scale off. So if I had another, if he had another black arrow, he could have done it." Yeah, yeah, I know, but he sees it and he's oh right. But like, in the true. book, in the book, uh, while the, the dwarves and Bilbo are watching the dragon attack Lake Town. Bilbo sees the thrush and he remembers that Bard is like descendant of so and so who used to rule Dale and can speak the languages of birds and says, "Quick thrush, find Bard the bowman, tell him things and stuff, tell him where the the hole is." So the thrush went, "Okay," and told him. He's like, "Aha!" 
And so, what I understand why they did it the way that they did, and because you know they they at least founded it in the past movie and say, oh, you know, this is why he knows and stuff like that. But the thing is that it took a little bit more away. And I, I made this point in the, the, the first vlog and in the second vlog, is that the story is about Bilbo. The story is about him doing these little teeny small things, which are small, it's, they're, they're big for him, but like killing a spider, you know, like finding the ring, like all the small little teeny things he does are the best that he can do. But these little small things done by these little small hobbit hands have huge consequences in Middle-earth. Huge consequences. And I like that, and I was thinking about this. And I was thinking about hobbits in general because they are they are described as childlike by all of the other races, not just because of their size. And it hit me when, when at the end, when Thorin's like, your people value the good things in life. Maybe if we value that, the world would be more merry. Even their values are values of those of innocent children. They like to eat good food. They like to fool around and have parties. They like to sing and dance. They like to troll people on the internet. They do know you stop that. But they are kind of... And I remember that The Hobbit was written as a children's story. Even though, yes, I know it was updated and attached to Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. And... That's what, and I started thinking about Dragon Age and thinking about all of this kind of stuff. Dragon Age has clean-shaven dwarf women as well. I'm not done yet. Fine. Well, that could be in their world. They're not in Tolkien's world, so there you go. I know. That, that, that's their world. You can sleep with anyone in Dragon Age, so, you know. And, so, anyway. But the thing is that... You can't sleep with a male dwarf. I've never had a, a male dwarf a companion love interest. Ever. That's true, but you could be a or male... A or a female dwarf You could be a male dwarf and sleep with... Yes, you can, but you you can't actually have a relationship with it with Maybe a dwarf and dragon Maybe it's because of lyrium they, they can't bone. But um, <laughs> but anyway, so the I, I will say that the Hobbit was the first bit of fantasy that I ever read, and I read it young because I was taught to read very young. So I read it in like second grade, and we read it again, you know, eventually in high school, and I read you know the the Fellowship and when in middle school, but it's the fact that Bilbo is a st is a stand-in for a child, and. It would just hit me so powerfully, you know, we play Dragon Age and, you know, we play Dark Souls and stuff like that, that you have the, the, the concept, I think, I think Gatsy Croshaw said it, that is the world really that boring that we actually have escapism becoming boring, like standard fantasy setting, and oh, all elves are light bone, or, you know, they, they shoot bows and their bones are very light, so they leap about, and all dwarves have Scottish accents and beards and, you know, wield axes dwarves and molds and stuff Scottish like that. Scottish accents, they should have Yorkshire accents. Uh, you can get into it when it's your time to talk. But, you know, so we actually have the Tolkienian fantasy setting, and then we have so many other things, like I've been pretty much tits deep in Thetis, and where David Guider said that he set out to create something that was fantasy, but went against the Tolkienian tropes, like having elves be an oppressed underclass, having, you know, instead of orcs being stupid thugs, having them be like these philosopher kings, the Kunari, and it just, I was just struck by it while we were watching this movie, you know, when people might react poorly to how uh, the high elves are like, oh, love is stupid and things like that. And the mages are oppressed. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the mages, they're not like wizards coming in and be like, we're the NPCs here to solve your problem. And that's why I think it bothers me all across all three movies, taking that power away from Bilbo's story, because in essence, all of us are hobbits. All of us have been Link, you know? All of us have been standard fantasy hero. We have, that's been the sword, you know, the sword at our belt, that's been the staff on our back, that's been our arrow is not. And taking that away, being like, yeah, well, he did some things and stuff, but I, I think detracts. And it's good that everyone, you know, it's tied to the Lord of the Rings, and you have this extra subplot with the things that came in from the appendices, and I just, at the end of the day, you know, for us who are old, and for all of us who have children now, putting their kids to bed, you know, they're the ones who are going to be sitting there at the controller, sitting there at the book, you know, with that's the shield on their back. You know, that's, and even though you might wake up the next day and you've got a test or all your taxes are due or your car, you owe a hundred dollars to get your car fixed or, you know, it's raining or whatever is happening. You know, you do have to go back to your life, like Bilbo went back to his life, but you're kind of changed by that. You're changed by the game you play, you're changed so by yeah, the books Bilbo's that you buying new stuff. Well, he managed to get most of it back. Except for the stuff that's actually back and just took. But, I mean, that's the thing. It's You do go there and back again. And I think that it's kind of like a metaphor for our experiences with fantasy. High fantasy or otherwise. I'm sorry. I, I said I was going to act philosophical, so... You can skip forward to the end. We'll still get the blip revenue for it, so don't worry about that. Did you think of the thing? I have not. This is really annoying. I'm going to I'm gonna try and go to see The Hobbit again in 48 frames uh, on, like, Tuesday or something. 
so I might tweet about it, but... And Stephen Fry almost gets hung. <laughs> FYI. Yeah, that's the most unrealistic thing in the entire film. It's like... Because uh, the rope would have broke. Either the rope would have broke his neck, the rope would have broke long before it pulled the bars out of the wall. Yeah, Because Bard, on Mythbusters, they tried this. Mar Bard put a rope out of a jail cell, and then and then it hung onto this boat that was going past it, but also hung onto Stephen Fry's neck. It caught the master's neck, and it got him back against the thing, and the then, rudder. They, then they, the boat pulled the wall off. Yeah, so what would have happened... Stephen Fry's neck. Okay, is, he, here's, here's in order of likeliness, because it was a rope made of, like, uh, cloths. It wasn't an actual... The rope would have broken... His neck would have broken, or those are the only two options. It wouldn't have. If Lake Time was intelligent, they would build their presence out of either cloth rope or Stephen Fry's neck. Because their fucking <laughs> stonework is terrible. But, um, yeah, so what other things were, was I thinking about during this? There, there was a... Besides a, Dragon Age. One of, the dwar one of the orcs who got killed at the end, um, the, not, the, not the guy from Spartacus, the other one, uh, the secondary orc, he got about 18 deaths, and... He did! It's like, it's like everyone was lending a killing Thrown off a mountain It's like, I'm really, I'm really surprised that Bard's little, little baby, like, you know, little, little Jordan didn't come in. Yeah, I got, like, a mountain yeah. dropped Everybody on him. Everybody took a hit at this Which guy. Which, really, it's hilarious, but I really wish it didn't happen, because right after Keely gets killed, Tori was like, Oh, no, Keely! And then she, like, grabs the orc, the orc that killed him. And, like, pulls him off the cliff, and this like... Yeah, she pushes them both off the mountain, and that would have been a wonderful yeah, end for Yeah, and I was like, oh, I, I see. Yeah, she's gonna... Okay, that's great. And then, of course, she survives, and then everyone else gets to kill the orc but her. True this. It's like... Shh. Although there was a, a kind of bit at the end where, like, she had banished in total trouble with, uh, uh what's his face, Likeless's father. Thandwheel. Yes. I can never say elvish words. <laughs> I took Dwarven in high school, I couldn't <laughs> pronounce elvish words. But, um, Thranduil... But then, like, then he's like, Rrr. and then, and she's, like, kneeling by his, by his, his body and crying. And he, and he, this, this is really good. He, this guy, the actor, I don't know what else he's Lee been in. Pace. Yeah. He, just, the entire movie, he looks either disgusted shocked or smug because the look on his face when he sees her <laughs> crying at the side of this dead dwarf that she loves is just one of such absolute disgust it's like he just stepped in shit and it splashed up on his face that's a look and then she's like i love the he's he is the bitchy drag queen of he elves is. <laughs> like every like every time they get a reaction to it, he's like and his rain his battle reindeer oh, is the best thing in the yes. film yes yes but then there's just and she's like is this what love is? And he goes, yes. She goes, I take it from me, my lord. I don't want it. it why does it hurt? And he goes, it hurts because it is real. <laughs> it's just, I don't, I mean, like, it's not like a kind of tear up kind of thing because I knew he was going to die from, like, you know. Plus, Kill and Philly are shitheads. Eh, that's it's like, you know, you've got the designated handsome dwarves who were supposed to emote over when they die. Which one is All the chancellor of my uni? The one with the, with the hat? The Northern Irish one. Yes, I know, but the, not... The, yeah, the, the one yeah, with the hat. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, but you've got the three... The three dwarves speak so infrequently, so... You've got the three handsome dwarves, which are the three ha human -y ones, which are the ones we're supposed to empathize over when they die. Keely, Philly, and Thorin are the most human-looking of the dwarves. This was done deliberately. Peter Jackson thought we couldn't emote over a fucking regular-looking dwarf. None of those three look like dwarves. They look like people. I would have been really sad if Balin died. I mean, and he does eventually, but... <clears throat> yeah, he lo but he looks like a he looks like an actual dwarf. A big nose. You know, but apparently Peter Jackson was like, no, we gotta make... No one would laugh, uh, no one would cry if Bomber died. And then someone on Tumblr would be like, fat shaming, and be like, no, it's just because he had, like, what, two lines? Just because Bomber fell into the magic potion as a child. That's Asterix. I know, but he looks like Obelix. Oh, well, anyway. That is the closest thing to a cinematic Obelix I've ever seen. Well, he does fall into like the equivalent of the River Styx, and like is spends most of the time in um, in Rookwood, like in a coma, being carried on a stretcher. Hmm. Like, I actually can't remember if that happened in the last movie. It's been so long. Uh, I don't think so. But yeah. Um, uh, oh, I another thing that I did that I didn't do in the book, and you made a good point. We were waiting for the taxi. Is that now the orcs have like worms from Dune. They're like, my first thought was tremors. Then, I, then the, the worm came out, the giant fucking thing, and I, I leant over and went, "We've got worms, sign the like of which even God has never seen." And I've never seen any of the tremors movie, so I just or thought Dune. of Dune. But That's, remember, I used to use that line in uh, From Beyond as well. Yeah, but I was like, whatever. But the thing is that, that then of course she says, "Well, why didn't they use them in Lord of the Rings against Minas Tirith? Yeah, or they got Helm's to be like, State. useful. We'll never take Minas Tirith. That's like, oh, no, no. And now no, they've got like you know trolls that can walk in daylight. Yeah, who look like, like giant big, babies. Well, it looked 
well, it looks like they crossbred, they crossbred cave trolls with orcs because they have sun invulnerability. It's but they have like women. siege weapons on their back, and they're like coming over the walls like the huge thing and attack from Titan. I'm like, yeah, why didn't you use that in the main battle? <laughs> Like some like, of them have just got big spikes. In we there, can't they, get the funding to to breed any more big trolls. Okay, let it go. They had these fucking troll things, which had like helmets made of stone on them, which they and were using to the the headbutt the wall. Down. I really wanted to lean over and say, "I'm the juggernaut, bitch," but then you know, I didn't. Well, you should have. I worked out what the bit was. What? And it actually connects him with something we haven't talked about yet. Oh. Billy Connolly. <laughs> that was great. Peter, Peter Jackson I'm just so fucking Scottish! He did not give a shit at this point. He wanted it over with. So when Billy Connolly refused to or could not do an accent that was not Billy Connolly doing stand-up, he just went, Sure, Billy, I don't care anymore. How do you Dane know? is going to sound just like you doing a stand-up routine. How do you know that that's what, that's what happened? Elves can be... Dwarves can be Scottish. They don't. Mm -hmm. It's so distracting mm -hmm. whenever it's Billy Connolly doing his own routine. I don't care. I like it, Billy Connolly. Billy Connolly can act. It's just they deliberately had him say, "Billy, I want you to sound as though you're in a nightclub yelling at the audience, a heckler." And it's like, it just takes you out of the film. It takes you out of the film. Yes, it does. It me back, and he was running a war pig. Too. And you know, I'm I, I am still a little bit offended that they didn't make apologies for Lord of the Rings by not having Brian Blessed play Dane Ironfoot. Actually, that would be kind of cool too. I have to. Because he, you know, he should have been Gimli. To be fair, he should have been glowing. He should have been any of the dwarves. He is the original. Like John Rhys Davies was good. John Rhys Davies was was great, but he is basically Brian Blessed Mark Two. Frodo alive. Yeah, Brian Blessed is Brian Blessed Mark One. He should have been in Mark there one. somewhere. And you know he was supposed to be Odin and Thor, but because um, Kenneth Branagh and him are big friends, oh really? And uh, he was he was kicked out by Marvel and replaced by Anthony Hopkins at the last minute. That sucks. Yeah, it's like it's Odin what else? as Brian Blessed. What else can I nitpick? Um, we, I was really worried that they would have Thorin die on the field without doing his his moment with Bilbo, but they fix it by having Bilbo, um, you know, with him when he dies. Although the Eagles took their fucking sweet time. And they had a concert. In the They're like 70. They got a, um, people want them to play Hotel California five times. You know, it's difficult. Well, hell froze over, so. <laughs> uh, classic rock joke. But so, the Eagles took their sweet time, and he, again, so. They carried a bear. They, well, Bjorn did come, and he did bring regular bears, but he wasn't carried by fucking eagles. He just came over the hill with his bears. Yeah, in the film, though. Yeah. That was really great. I, I realized that. Wouldn't it be great if you could do that in Dragon Age? You can have like, who, you know, you could have like Morgan shape shift into a bear, and you can have a fucking like so. Like if you're a ranger, you'll summon an eagle to carry her. Place. Honey, better than that. Play the game. Okay. Well, I'm not at that part yet. <laughs> but so, um, so yeah, it, it, some things happen differently. I mean, Bilbo gets knocked out by the main orc, or the the the, uh, the general to the main orc, instead of. Uh, randomly because he's invisible by one of the eagles dropping a rock on him which is well, whatever and he got to have his tender moment and cry over thor and orlando bloom uh his head looks more square than he did in lord of the rings compare the two it's, it's really great because it's testosterone poisoning it's made him look less you know le less femmy there's this part where like one like an, an elven weird. rider rides up and it's him and what's her face and he's like your father commands you back and he's like no i have to go and then he goes bard is a better me than me that is true Look, Evan. He I mean, does. He looks bit. like Will Turner. He really does. Look, Evans got to use a sharp object to kill a dragon. Look, Evans, who played Dracula, in <laughs> Dracula killed a dragon I don't get it. It with a, great, a stake. A great movie. That's hilarious. I want to go home and kill dragons. But yeah, so I mean, I, I, like I said, it was a, it was a good way to cap off the trilogy. The whole thing had 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 issues that I know. sorry that I was like. Meh, meh. Yeah. Although I really wish at the end when he, they're like, oh, they're, they're auctioning off Bilbo's stuff. He's like, I'm me in here. They're like, prove it. So he pulls out his contract. And he's like, look. He goes, who's the person you pledged your service to? And he goes, this Thor in Oakenshield. And he goes, he was a friend. It really, I just really wanted to be like, he is he is Thor, he is Thor and son of Thrain, king under the mountain. And everyone would be like, like what's a mountain? We live in the Shire. <laughs> Shire. We've never seen a mountain over here, lad. I... Sometimes I feel living in Northern Ireland like I'm living in the Shire. What oh, toilets that flush? I know, it'll be grand. I have a theory, and I'm going to share this. It's nothing to do with the Hobbit, but I will tell you, non-Americans who watch our show, 
I will tell you the big secret of, of American world domination, of geopolitical domination, all right? An American wakes up every morning 99.9 .9 repeating percent sure that the toilet will flush every time. And it is that confidence that, that, that builds us up, that lets us know that, yeah, we can rule the world because our toilets flush. It's, I cannot tell you, I literally cannot tell you how much time I've spent standing around in public restrooms, awkwardly playing with my phone, waiting for the thing to fill up so I can try to make the paper go down again. Just saying. If you were in a public restroom in America, it would be a spectator sport because you have so much fucking space between and underneath this thing, the doors. It's a small price to pay for flushing toilet. But anyway, so the happen. You know, whenever Thandriel got really angry in the thing, they should have done what they had in the second one, which I liked, mm -hmm. was basically Thandriel uses uh, magic to make himself look normal, but he's got like horrible scars. They should have had it whenever he loses his temper, it's like he, his magic is less strong. Yeah. Because he's, uh, he's, uh, he kind of like just minces around, like meh, meh, yeah, disapprove. Right. And, then, and then, so then Legolas is like, I gotta go back, because now I've like betrayed you and my king and stuff like that. So he's like, yeah, well, you'll we'll find a place. Go north and look for Aragorn. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm pretty sure Legolas was sent by his father in Lord of the Rings, so I didn't like that ending. He should have just gone home. They should have killed off Toriel and have him go home. It's like, you know, yeah, son, let's drink some, you know, reindeer-based wine and, you know, talk about, about dead girls. Yeah. But so that was that. That was good. So I'm pretty sure I've, the stuff I forgot to mention that I wanted to mention. Well, you can say it on Twitter. Probably. We're nearly 40 minutes in. The audience has clicked away. They just wanted to see what we thought. Now they realize that we're not going to tear any parts of it to shreds. Like a wall. Oh, there's, there's problems. There's uh, Billy Connolly problem. He, lo he's yeah. car he looked good. He had like a, uh, a war, war wild boar, which was cool. Um, and he looked great. It's just, it didn't even try to act. It was just like... He was a bit part. He's convinced. He's just. It's like he's doing a stand-up routine, and it took me right. It's like Barry Humphreys as the fucking Goblin King in the you first part. You just have part. so many issues when there's act, this casting, to, to, you know, casting decision that you disagree no, no, with. No, I was it fine. Me right I was it. fine with Billy Collins. You know, it's the way he played. It's the way he acted. That's the problem. Well, it's it's just the way he portrayed it. So I don't have anything else to say about it. Go see it. Well, I don't have to tell you because you're going you're gonna to go see it. So, you know, buy the extended edition of all three when oh. they come out on DVD so you can watch I've, them and then all of the like, Lord of the Rings extended editions and then probably I have a really hope episode. that they film some extra stuff for Lord of the Rings while they film this. Oh, you mean they'll come out with a special, special edition with I really hope so. Yeah, like, for instance, uh, I'm sure I mentioned this in a previous one. The Moria section. We should have flashbacks to Balin and his people fighting the goblins and dying. Because in Lord of the Rings as it is, it's just like, oh, it's an old friend of Gandalf, or Gandalf someone that Gimli knows, so it's like someone, you know, it's a character that we know, their friend is dead. No, Frodo would know who Balin is because he's grown up with Bilbo's tales. Y yes, he, yeah, they, they didn't, but they didn't have any lines or anything saying like, oh, Balin from, from, from the Legolas, book, Legolas. from Bilbo's book or anything. Well, okay, Legolas wouldn't know because but, Legolas wouldn't But the, unless you watch the films back to back, you might not realize that it's Balin from The Hobbit. If you have flashbacks, it drives it I home. I knew it was Balin from The Hobbit because I've read all the books. Yes, like I know, but the average audience member, it will drive it, it will make it much more emotional if you see a flashback to them taking them oh, as Gandalf oh, is reading oh, the story. Right, oh. Get, get Ian McKellen to read some more stuff, have some bits, and it's like, holy shit, that Balin's dead. Oh no, Balin and, you know, Dwalin didn't, a couple other ones went. It's like, oh no, so that's what happened to the rest of the company, and then, you know, audience members are really sad. Which would be good. Plus, you can refilm the bit where um, where Bilbo finds the ring. Well, you've already got that. Just reinsert insert the Hobbit version into the Lord of the Rings because they had a flashback with Ian yeah. Home. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. You know, just little bits and to to gel the. Bits oh, together. here's something I didn't like. And again, it's one of those that wasn't in the. I don't like how Frodo and Bilbo go into like, and Sam because I think Sam wears the ring like one time. Go into like nether. I don't like how they go into the fade or the umbra, and it's like. And I understand it has to be filmed that way so you can tell. Oh, it's not that they're invisible; they've connected to the spirit world. It or was whatever. distinctive when they did it in Lord of the Rings, yeah. and they wanted to make it look distinctive. And I can tell you why I think it shouldn't be that way for for Bilbo, because when he finds the ring, the ring has kind of given up hope because it's been down with Gollum for so long, but it's not. 
it doesn't have like all the evil connotations that start happening in Lord of the Rings because the ring is forgotten. It only starts to grow in power when you know Frodo takes it over because Bilbo is kind. It, it realizes it can't go any further with Bilbo and stuff like that. So I think for him it should just be what it probably was in the first when he, when Tolkien first wrote the book is just yeah. a magic invisibility ring. Yeah. And it only takes on this darker, sinister tone later. So we don't have super schmerbo vision. I'm, I'm fine with it from a continuity standpoint, because in the films. However, when you're wearing that thing in a fucking battlefield, the guy the guy should not be able to go more than two feet without getting stabbed or falling over something, because he couldn't fucking see. Well, honey, I'm like, well, he could. Remember, he was like dodging shadows. But the thing is, also, it's not dangerous because you can't see. It should be dangerous because people can't see you. That's what happens to yeah. Bilbo. He gets... He, he he's, he's and he goes rock the rock and knocks yeah, but him out. he's dodging things and everything. He shouldn't be able to work out what's ha what's happening around him because it's so there's so right. much stuff and it's it all so. Be, it should just be regular, like how it's described. Ideally, but you know the the problem with the way Peter Jack the distinctive look he gave the ring in Lord of the Rings is just it's come back to bite them in the Hobbit. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> just, <laughs> it's, like, Ow. it's just it's how wearing that and then you can't work out a fucking thing that's going on whenever he's in the battlefield. Yes, you haven't crossed into the Umbra. You're it's not in the thing. It's a fucking miracle that that Bilbo got 20 feet Pretty without much. falling over. Well, that's the thing is also, again, in the book, he is nearly, he nearly, you know, is left on the battlefield because he wakes up with, I mean, he was wearing a helm. He was wearing a helm in the book, and I think it split the helm. The rock did. But he wakes up pretty, like, you know, post-concussion and realizes he still has the ring on, takes it off. He's lying amidst the dead on the battlefield. And someone's like, oh my gosh, isn't that the halfling that, that the wizard wants? Oh yeah, we... Oh, and, he, and he's like, oh, you must have been missed. I, I was knocked out. But, you know, he could have easily died if he'd been unconscious for long enough with the ring on. I mean, you know. Yeah. Um, I right now can't think of anything else to say. No. But yeah, go... You, you don't need us to tell you to go see it. Um, ha ha ha. We get to see it first. They're... It's not perfect. None of the Hobbit films are. But it's but good. It's still good. I, I'd say it's the best of the three. Yeah. So it's weird, the Peter, the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings films go from Hobbit, you know, Five Armies, Fellowship, down. It's like a, it's like a triangle. Or spiral. That's how the... I mean, as far as I can tell, the films I, I wouldn't say, because I would say the Two Towers and Return of the King kind of, are kind of equal, but they're not as good as the Fellowship. So it oh, plateaus. I'd, I'd, I'd put Return of the King as uh, the worst of the Lord of the Rings. Oh, Simply because he took all the stuff that people liked in, in the second one, like Legolas doing the, the, the surfboard down the stairs, and he turned it. He just turned everything up to eleven. It's just like, elves at eleven! Whoa! <laughs> they need they need the Inqui they need the Inquisitor. My Inquisitor would have dealt with everything. She would have closed that fade rift and sent what's his face back to Mordor. I tell you what. Ah. So iron that's... bull would kick the shit out of Smaug. Yes, that's what they needed. They needed iron bull. We'll see you on next time. For the pyramid. Oh, Jesus. What? Another found footage horror movie. Yeah, this one's apparently like As Above, So Below, but not as good, according to reviews. So I should probably take Dramamine, or we should not sit in the front. 